banditos. The king is back. No, not the bullet king. The white death. We're back with another Division 2 video, and today we are going to be talking about the named M44 Sniper that has made its way back on top with the Coming to You 22 update. Let's get into what you need to know about the weapon and the amazing builds that you can make with it. Let's get into it. Piece of shit wristwatch. The White Death used to be the king of snipers. But with Project Resolve, what's just happened, they rebalanced all of the MMRs and the White Death was no longer the king. If I can direct your attention to the chart, now with title update 22, it looks like they've basically have just gone through and reverted all the changes that they made back with Project Resolve, which sort of seems like a waste of development dollars. But there is an emphasis on this TU-22 update and that is optimal range. And that is in preparation for Seasons 2.0 and Modifiers, which have a theme and that's gonna be all about range. So there's that, I guess. That aside, if you look at the M44, that is the base weapon of the White Death. It's getting a buff and a significant one. On the left is where we are now and it's at 423,108 base damage. That is beastly. But currently, if you scroll down, the SRS has got a higher base damage. And so does the SR1, and so does the M700, and a lot of other weapons. So with title update 22 on the right in the orange, you can see that the same weapon, M44, is being pushed up to 433, and the other ones are being rebalanced back to where they were before Project Resolve. So this is definitely a reversion. Yeah, and to be frank, just seems like they're playing a game of whack-a-mole, back and forth, back and forth with the same weapons. But... It never really made sense that the M44 wasn't one of the strongest snipers in the game. It dropped to like top five, if I recall, but it's a bolt action. It's got a small mag. It's got limited mods. It's got a low RPM. It should definitely be up there at the top, if not the top. Now, the one that's always been at the top and continues to be is going to be the Model 700, which is basically that hunting rifle. So they did nerf it a little bit, but it's still at the top. I don't know why they needed to nerf it. It's a very difficult weapon to use. It's got seven rounds in the mag, at very slow reload. So there's more to the M44 than what meets the eye. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. So let's take a look at this Warlock. This is the named version of the M44, the White Death. And the difference between this one and the normal M44 is the headshot damage stat. So this gives you 137% headshot damage. So that's a perfect headshot damage stat. If we look at another sniper like the Nemesis, it's got 100 and 11% headshot damage. And that's what you're gonna find on all the others. We got a 55 RPM, six rounds in the mag on the version that I'm running, but it's base is five. You got marksman rifle damage, and then I put damage to targets out of cover. Damage to armor is also really good either way. Our drop off is at about 60 here, and they're gonna move that down to 50, which is neither here or there. It really cap us out at 100 meters, which is just what it is. Now I'm running determined on this, but you have lots of options. Another really good one is lucky shot, reformation or preservation for more healing or behind you if you're looking for a strong first shot. There's lots of different ways you can go. But Determined's nice because it's got a small mag. So it gives you some forgiveness there. Lucky Shot is another way to do that. Just depends on how much time you spend it in and out of cover. I spend a lot of time out of cover. So as far as mods go, there are only three slots. It can host anything in the scope area. I'm running the 8X because I'm on the move a lot and I'm playing in close, but I also, you'll see in the gameplay that I'm also running no scope. And when I do that, I run the reflex site for 5% weapon handling. And this is also getting a buff in the coming update. The reflex is going from 5% weapon handling to 12% weapon handling. That's exciting. Cause you gotta remember weapon handling includes everything, stability, accuracy, reload speed, so the faster your reloads, the better. Also, it helps with the stability. This rifle's got quite a kick. And then down here, I'm running stability. It's sort of my go-to on snipers, uh, again, to manage that kick. But also the stability mods help weapon sway and stability is inside weapon handling. And you guessed it, in this coming season, this one gets a major buff too. The angled grip is going from 10% stability to 30% stability. And the build I've put together for you today emphasizes these upcoming changes and will even get better with the coming season. And for this slot, I always go reload speed because the reload on this thing isn't that great. I wish I had a suppressor slot because I would run the Omega suppressor, which gives you 20% more stability. That would be pretty cool, but we don't get that. So it gets a damage lift, but what makes this weapon unique is that headshot damage gives 
gives you some more flexibility on your build. So most of us are running the talent headhunter on our builds, and that's going to require 150% headshot damage to ensure you're getting the maximum punch out of your rifle. That's really easy to do with snipers, but you still want to get the highest first kill damage out of your rifle. That headshot damage is giving you the flexibility to achieve that while opening up your build for more build diversity. And as you can see on the build that I'm running here, I decided to go with protection from elites and I loaded up on weapon handling everywhere I could. So I've actually minimized my headshot damage because this weapon is so strong and it gives me the headshot damage stats that I need to be able to do that. The other thing that makes the White Death really unique is its reload. It's one of a kind in this game. You can reload single rounds after every shot if you need to, or two shots, or three shots. And when you run the mag dry, it'll reload a clip, making it really fast. Now the Model 700, on the other hand, has a single round reload too. When you run to the bottom, you're gonna have to single round all the way up to the top. And that ends up giving the White Death a really nice advantage and a unique trait. That means when you're on a killing spree, you're sort of rewarded from a reload perspective. So when you run your mag dry because you're doing a really good job killing, or you're doing a really bad job and missing a lot of shots, either way, you're gonna get a faster reload. So you're not being punished, or another way to look at it is you're being rewarded. So I'm really happy to see the White Death back on top where it belongs. As far as builds go with the White Death, you know, you can run it with traditional snipers, but it's one of the weapons that I started no scope sniping with. So I've built this build for that capability. And you can also run it with the 8X scope or you can run it with the digital scope and get even more headshot damage, which is gonna require you to play a little bit more at range. And if you're doing that, you might wanna adjust this build. So this one is a build that maximizes weapon handling and it's disgusting, the weapon handling. I got 107% weapon handling when I'm running it with a scope. And when I go no scope, that pushes up to basically 120% weapon handling. And the stability would go from 142 to 174% total stability. Nasty. The headshot damage, we're at 232%, which is plenty. And yeah, you could definitely run that higher if you feel like it. But I decided to go with a three-piece Zoo. That's giving me magazine size, which gives me one more round. But I'm also running the gloves, which is giving me 15% handling. I got headshot damage and weapon damage. I'd actually put an armor core there if I could. I just don't have that piece. And for the chest, I'm running the third piece with headshot damage, weapon handling, and protection from elites. I'm running all the protection from elites so I can spend more time out of cover. And also, I don't really need any more headshot damage. I mean, you could if you wanted to, but that'll protect my bonus armor. And then I'm running two pieces of hot shot, which is gonna give me a nice 30% marksman rifle damage and then 30% handling. And then I put even more handling on these two pieces. So the knees are the same as the holster. And in the backpack, I'm running the memento. So mostly for that 30% weapon damage on stack, we're gonna have 15% more weapon damage when we're stacking those trophies. So 15, 30, 45, on top of the original 30 when we're at full stacks. And then I'm getting 10% bonus armor when we grab a trophy per blue core. So that's 40% bonus armor for every single trophy and then 3% armor regen. And then we're getting the skill efficiency. The nemesis is maintained as my backup as it usually is. And then we're running the sharpshooter specialization. Mostly I'm doing that for target acquisition speed. So basically handling. Sometimes it can be easier to use than the nemesis depending on your situation. You got plenty of ammo for this thing as you're getting headshot kills. So the mechanics are the same. I recommend using the stronger weapons to kick off the fight and to activate your headhunter. Then switch to your white death and get one more headshot to activate determined. And from that point forward, you can go for body shots, go to town. All right, banditos, I hope you enjoy this one. Look forward to reviewing more of these updates with you. Catch you later. Thank you for hanging out with me today. My name is Tuxedo Bandito. That's Tito Bandito. What's crack a -lockin'? This was another episode of The Division 2. If you found this video helpful, subscribe, like, and turn on notifications to ensure you don't miss out on the fantastic experiences waiting for you in The Division 2. And if you like builds like this, check out the recommended build video I have here for you. If you have anything you want to see covered, be sure to let me know in the comments below. And thank you to all the channel members and donors who make everything possible. Tux Nation wouldn't be without you. When you buy a game from Ubisoft, enter the creator code Tuxedo Bandito to support the channel. Easy peasy. Now maybe this cheapskate can afford to sign me up for that dating app I've had my eyes on. Follow me. I get it.